Hey guys, welcome back to Ron's a Nut. I've got a new video for you. This is video log three, the build log for the STH-10 upgrade for Threadripper. We're going to get into some graphics card, um, adding the water blocks, fans, radiators, and tubing. So stick around. Hope you enjoy it. All right. So in order to put the GPU into the system there and line up the the ports I need to put this block on the card. Now real quick before we take a look at it, this is the bits power GPU water block 1080 Ti founders edition clear acrylic but RGB and so uh, what they have here is a little RGB controller that allows you to turn the speed mode I think it cycles through breathing and different colors and then the color choice but you have to plug it into this Molex connector <coughs> and um, it does have you know a four pin here so what I'm hoping is I can connect this up to an extension cable from the uh, motherboard and see if that'll help control this because I don't really I don't believe I'm going to want to run a power a big power cable connector and it I don't know we'll see We'll see what's going to work and what's not. I like to have it all controlled by the motherboard. So, but it's a really pretty block. You can see it's got a TI in, in the middle there. And uh, so they always, Bits Power, I think, makes one of the, most, the nicest blocks. I like Bits Power blocks, GPU blocks, better than I do EK. So. Nice TI there. Yep. So, but before I can do this, I need to take apart the GPU. <coughs> and also, Bits Power includes a plate, although because of the coloring in my system really is, uh, you know, silver and black and, and probably a little bit of red, some red. I don't particularly like this, but since I have a reverse layout <coughs> in my uh, STH-10, it's going to be installed this way. So you're going to see all the pretty block. You're not really going to see the back plate. But my understanding is that you can, with this block, you can leave the factory back plate on here. So we'll see if that's the case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, take a look when I take it apart, see if all these screws line up in the right place. Uh, just looking at it from here, it looks like all the screw position points that would be needed still remain so if I just use that as a guide yeah I may be able to leave this plate on here so we'll see so for now let's get this out of the way not using that now if you've seen this uh, me disassemble and put a water block on probably many times or other ones I am just going to uh, put some music for you in the background and unless I have something specifically to say, it's going to be a time lapse for you. So by the way, if you're doing this at home, this, these little uh, nut heads, hex heads, are four millimeter. So I found the right tool for it.
All right, we have the uh, thermal pads placed. Now I'm going to put uh, some Arctic Silver on the GPU. I kind of like to do it in a star pattern. All right. Although they're too long now because I'm not using this plate. <clears throat> so let me find the right length. And I have them. So that's the one downside. You can reuse the back plate, but the screw length will be too long if uh, unless you're using that plate because this plate <clears throat> has you passing through this top. And there's these standoffs here. So I'm going to need to find uh, a little bit shorter length. Okay, so I found the right screw. Basically, it's a, uh, I have a, it's a 2.5 millimeter by, I believe this is an 8. This is a 10, or I don't know what these are. This is the original ones. And the ones that come with the back plate and the, are 10s. So they're too long. I believe this is an 8. And this guy goes in there nicely and secures just fine. I already put two in. Taking the last one out now. Very pretty block. Very pretty block. All right. <clears throat> now that that's done, I've got to do the same thing to the other one. Then we'll get it inside the system and arrange the, the tubing preparations. All right. Well, I'll come back once that is all complete. All right, guys. So it's time to get closer to... Um, getting this system built and what I need to do is put fans on these radiators but um, 
before I put the fans on there, I need to make sure they work. So, I mean, you know, these fans are the RGB ones. These are the Master Fan Pro 120s. They're Air Balance RGB. And, uh, of course, they're RGB ready. On uh, the box, it shows it says they, they work with the Asus Aura Sync, which is the reason why I got them. But they also work with uh, Gigabyte and MSI as well. And let's see the specs on here. Um, they provide red, blue, or RGB LED. The fan speed is 650 RPM to 1300. Uh, they are PWM fans. Airflow is 42.7 CFM. Air pressure 0.96. Noise level 6 to 20 dB. So they should be nice and quiet. So that's one of the reasons why I got them. Plus I'll have them on the Aquero. I don't think there's going to be any issues with them. So that is the uh, fan that we're we're using on here for on each rad. And I'm yeah you can't see the, see that but so this is what we're going with. But before I install them, I want to make sure that they're working. And so there's two connections to these fans. So this is what they look like. They have uh, these uh, clear blades, nice black, no stickers or anything on them, which is cool. The only sticker they have is back here where it says Cooler Master, Master Fan Pro 120. And so this is uh, the only markings on here. And then the back has a switch. I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's a little switch it says R, then B, and then RGB. So you can manually set this fan. You can manually set this uh, fan LED to either red, blue, or the RGB, which then requires a controller. And so these fans will be controlled from the motherboard using the Aura uh, Sync software. Right or another thing, or they can be controlled by any other uh, as long as it's a compatible controller. So what I have here in my setup just to test these fans is I have a uh, uh, mod right or mod my toys um, fan splitter. It's a four pin splitter. I just have an external power supply right here, same one I use to uh, power my pump with uh, to um, test my loop and. So I have that connected up. It actually uses a, uh, uh, a SATA power connection on it. Uh, nowadays, a lot of things are having that. So that's what feeds the power, and I can get up to uh, uh, eight or nine fans on this to, for in a system if I wanted to. Right now, I'm just using it for testing, so, um, and I'm only going to test one fan at a time. So um, I can just connect up the power to this. And as you can see right now, I have the fan spinning, full 12 volts. And then what I'm going to do here is I'll take this little screwdriver and switch this fan up to red. So hopefully you can see that. There's red. I know there's a lot of light that's kind of drowning it out, but red. And then, I, oops, I can change it to blue. So there's blue. Got blue going now. And then I'm going to switch it down to RGB. And I'll put it here for right now. Or actually, that's all right. So it's still spinning. That's RGB. Now, what I have right here is an RGB controller. This is, um, and I'll show you guys more. I'll go into more when it, uh, when I, when I configure the system and when I install it in the system. But this is made by Silverstone. It is an LSB018 port RGB light strip control box. So this control box allows you to have eight RGB connections split out of it, but controlled the RGB lighting would be controlled either by the box itself. It has its own integrated controller to do certain things, certain limited things. And then of course, or you can connect it and have it as a pass through from um, your main RGB source. So that's what I'm gonna do. Eventually when I get it in the system, the um, Asus motherboard is gonna feed this splitter and then I'm gonna split this out to control all of my um, uh, RGB devices. And I might need another one. I, I can't remember how much it was. I don't think it was that expensive. Um, but right now, the way this works is I have uh, power coming from my 
you know, my little power brick. So that's given power going into the controller. So we've got power feeding the controller. There's a place for powering it. Then, then all these ports, there's one, two, three, three here, two here, that's four, five, and then three on this side, six, seven, eight. So there's a total of eight, you know, um, splitter ports that you can connect um, RGB devices, compatible RGB devices to for it. <clears throat> and then over here on this end, this connection right here is the pass-through from your, you know, this will be coming from my motherboard. All right, so there's a pass-through connection. I call it a pass-through. It's what, you know, it's from coming from your main controller if you're not going to use the one here. And then there's also a place to connect a switch or what would be if some cases, uh, some cases have uh, lighting control switches. So you would connect that to here. I actually have a, just a little reset switch installed in here for now. And then right here is a control switch that says, are you using the Silverstone controller? That's where I have it set right now. Or I would switch it to the other position and that is allowing the control for RGB to come through the box which would be coming from my motherboard. So that is what it is. It's a small little device. They give you Velcro and stuff and again I'll take you through it when I actually install it in the case. But um, but again it's a nice little box. It's light. Uh, you get some Velcro on it like I said and I'll, I'll find a place to mount it in the case and maybe I'll need more than one. I'm not sure. So that's how this is configured. Now I have one of the ports split off. I have a cable here. The one thing though is it's got a proprietary, these are proprietary connectors. So in order to connect to this fan, this fan has kind of a standard connector which you would think would work, but it doesn't come with this little pin, these little uh, pins right here. I actually had to pull these from a, a Mod My Toys uh, LED strip box. So. I can install it. It just comes empty. And so this one has, uh, you know, you, you need to be able to connect the two together. Now there is a, a little uh, line on here for your 12 volt main, your main pin one connection, and there's one also on this connector from the fan. So what I'm going to do now is connect up the Silverstone RGB controller to test the RGB on this and make sure I have the pins all lined up. I do. All right, so I plugged it in. We have fan power still spinning. Oops. <laughs> and uh, now what I need to do is, you know, I'll, I'll cycle through whatever this controller um, provides for for LED lighting. So I'll prop it up. I've got two cameras going. That's why I don't have it right in the middle, so you guys can see this. But you should be able to see it fine from both both places. I think I have the uh, focus set right. All right, so let's go here. Our first button, first click, and that is just pure. Looks like pure white. It's a little bit purplish, I guess, in this light. And um, maybe I can turn off some of these other lights here, so you guys can get a better, better sense of the color. Oh, let's see if these. We'll have to have at least one light going. There we go. So hopefully you can see that. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So we're just going to do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click through this switch here on the controller. All right. So again, RGB controller box is cycling it from white to red to blue to green to yellow to, I don't know, what's that like? Light, light blue. Purple, violet. Now I think now the fan uh, is spinning, but I believe that's a pulsing. Yeah, that's like a, a breathing, right? That would be a breathing type of uh, effect. So we got breathing with white. Now we have uh, breathing with red. I suspect now we have breathing with blue. Breathing with green. Yep. Breathing with yellow. I guess it's all the colors we went through before. Breathing with light blue. Breathing with violet. Yep. 
Now we're back to white again. Breathing with white. And now, let's see, this looks like this one here is cycling through different colors. So this is like a, just a color cycle. So this is spinning. I don't know. Oh, I guess it is breathing a little too. Yeah. So it looks like we got some breathing going and it's cycling through uh, all of the uh, colors. So back to white. Uh, going to red. There was like an orange there, a yellow, green, light blue. Yeah, blue. I guess when you come back around to uh, purple to white. Yeah, it's white at the end, okay. And then back off. So that is uh, that is the uh, the that's what this controller provides. Uh, and so we know. So I know my my fans. My fan works. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check my other fans and make sure that they're all good. And I'm not going to show you each one. I'm just going to go through that, and then um, then I'll show you as I mount the uh, I mount them to the radiator. So um, actually, I might just I'll just mount them as I go. So we can do that. I get a radiator here. Let's get power off. Disconnect. Uh -oh. See, this guy right here does not come with the fans, and it does not come with the controller. The controller actually has a couple of LED street strips in it and the cables that connect to it, so it doesn't, ha doesn't need to have these. But for me to connect this controller and to these fans uh, for testing, I need one of these things. So I uh, will continue to use that. I have a couple extra ones. So fans are going to be mounted. Here I'm going to have a uh, push configuration, so they're going to blow through the case, and also what they do is they'll mount um, on this panel. Yeah, they'll mount on this panel through the pa through the panel to the radiator. So right now I have just a couple of screws, and then um, these cables on the bottom are going to come through. So I'm going to have them. Uh, down here uh, on the um, underneath the radiator down along this side here so so that I can uh, I don't know if you can see that yeah I'm gonna put it down here so let me uh, let me move these guys a little bit screws right here. These fans are nice. They have um, they have mounts. Looks like they've got rubber mounts even on this side here too. So there's this whole this whole mounting piece. This is all rubber. So it will provide protection from any um, major any vibration. So right now what I'm going to do is remove this and I actually have, I need an Allen head. Now I'm going to run these cables so that they're all going to come <coughs> come out to a particular to a fan splitter on the uh, ra the rad. Right now my plan is to connect them all into this. Um, this is made by Deep Cool. Um, this little splitter. 
believe this is made by Deep Cool. So I'm going to plug all four of them into here, and then I'm going to have extensions coming off of these RGB portions right here to go to the uh, to this controller in the case. So that's the plan. These uh, fan cables. I'm going to have to, yeah, try something. Maybe get some extensions for them. Um, let me get a couple more going here. All right. So I've got the fans, four of them installed, and also a splitter. Now, one of the things, uh, the lengths of these uh, fan cables are not that long. I could not reach them all to put and hide the splitter on the end. I would have had to buy a bunch of extensions or cut and make my own cables, which I'm not prepared to do. So I've got some clips and tie wrap the cables, fold it up all out of the way. But one of the things that you got to contend with is because you have all this RGB, you also have RGB cables that you got to connect up. So I've got extensions and some and a, another splitter. Uh, it's not a block like this, but a cable splitter that's going to be able to take these four and go into one RGB um, connection coming off the motherboard or the controller. So, so that's what I'm going to have to do. So those cables are in order. I don't have them here yet. Um, and I do have the splitter here and what I did is I just basically velcroed this guy right in the middle of the block tie wrap these down and since they'll be mounted like this in the side of the um, STH-10 you really won't uh, you won't see see that it'll be at the bottom hanging down in the case then of course coming up from the back of here is when all the cables will go up the back of the uh, STH-10 so so anyway so that's the way the assembly is going to be let's test it out real quick I've got uh, power and I have uh, RGB cables here <clears throat> and I can plug in only two of these fans are going to light up because I only have two splitters right now but once I get the four-way I will <clears throat> of course we know that they all work the only question is um, you know I guess just verifying I didn't hose anything up when I assembled it all all right now we need power there we go. Got four fans going. Two of them are connected up and they're on the internal controller. This uh, Silverstone LSB01 and they're just on the straight just change your your mode cycle through the colors. It's not on the breathing. I forget what the breathing one is. Breathing one is one of these. I think this is the one that breeze and it goes to different colors I think now that's breathing white and that's breathing red it's one of these yeah there you go that's the breathing cycling colors through so that is the way the fans are getting mounted on the radiator. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the other ones and test them and assemble them the same way. And then once all of that's done, we'll get them mounted into the STH-10. All right. So I'll be back with another rad assembled, just like this one. So we have two uh, Nemesis Black Ice SR2 radiators. One is a One's a nemesis. You can, I, I know one thing I don't like about this is um, the finish might look cool in other systems, but uh, having a nice smooth bottom like this one here is great, especially for mounting things. So I was afraid that this might come off, but the Velcro's holding on. I put alcohol on before I put the pads on. So here we have the two rads ready to go. And... Um, Tie wrap secured down the cables, the splitter here. I've already tested everything. I do have, uh, you know, 
the leads coming out and I bought a whole bunch of uh, extension cables that I'll have to run these fans up to the Aquero. And then the only thing I'll need to deal with uh, is these pigtails for the uh, RGB for the fans. So I've got splitters coming, the same, a four-way to one splitter. So for that one and same thing here, these four. So other than that, these guys are ready to be mounted inside of the, uh, into the STH-10. And then finish putting together the, uh, the uh, piping or the tubing loop to these, to these rads. So let's, uh, let's get the STH-10 on the table and make that happen. All right, boys and girls, there we go. We have the radiators with the fans installed. One of the things, though, that I learned was that actually the top uh, radiator spacing where you mount the bracket is a little bit shallower, uh, more narrow than the bottom. Down here, I've got plenty of space and the, the, uh, the fan hub just hangs down no problem. This guy, you see, I can't get my finger in. There is no, there's no depth because this is the bottom plate. This is the top plate with a, with a ridge. So I had to move the, uh, the uh, hub to the other side. So right here I have the hub just, uh, you know, with the Velcro down in the middle, right in the same spot where it was on the radiator, except to put it underneath smashes it completely so and I have all of the pigtails hanging off here now to be cabled up for the RGB so we have the radiators with the fans installed and uh, and actually we have the in the tubing done and I'll take you through that in just a moment all right guys well I think we're gonna end the video here I hope you liked uh, the build log so far if you did please like and please favorite and if you're so inclined please subscribe next video I'll take you through the loop uh, probably show you how I cut this pipe and uh, then uh, let's get a leak check going I'm dying to see how well uh, all the tubing connections uh, are especially using this uh, hard tube in those compression fittings so so stick around for that please come back for the next build log that's it for on from Ron's a nut thanks for watching